Hey everybody, how's it going? In this video, we're going to talk all about double equals versus dot equals in Java. By the end of this video, you're going to have a deep understanding of the difference between double equals and dot equals and know exactly when to use each. If this is your first time on this channel, I'm John, lead Java software engineer, and I make Java tutorial videos just like this one every single week. So be sure to hit that subscribe button so you get the new tutorial every week. So when you first learned Java, after you messed with just hello world, you probably made some ints, right? You had int, int one equals three, uh, you know, int, int2 equals 4. Or maybe you got these ints as input from the user or something. And then maybe you wrote something to see if they were equal to each other. So you probably did something like uh, if int1 is equal to int2, then, you know, we'll print out the numbers are equal. Uh, else, you print out the numbers are not equal. And you can run that, and of course, 3 should not equal 4, so the numbers are not equal. And of course, if they are equal, we set them both to 4, we can run it again, and we get that the numbers are equal. And that absolutely does work perfectly for ints. That is what you should be doing. But what happens if you do that with a different kind of variable in Java? So instead of an int, you do something that's not a primitive type, uh, but it's still a pretty simple type in Java, a string. So let's say instead of ints, you have string, string1 equals new string, hello. And then you also have string, string2 equals new string, and also give it the exact same value, hello. So those strings should be identical, right? But if we paste these values in here and do the exact same comparison, we could say strings instead. If we run that, we get the strings are not equal. Now, why is that? And we could even like print out both of those strings and prove that they have exactly the same values, right? String one and string two. So we can see they have exactly the same values, and yet Java thinks they're not equal. Why is that? And the whole reason for that all boils down to what Java is actually doing when you're doing this double equals check. What is actually going on is Java is checking the underlying memory location of those two objects. So I know that all sounds really technical, but it's really not that scary. So let's talk about what happens when you actually call like new string here. What Java is doing is creating a brand new object at a new memory location and then creating this variable string one that points to that memory location. And the same thing here for the second string, it's creating another string object at a different memory location and having creating this variable string two that points to that second location. And so what this double equals is actually doing is comparing the memory locations of those two objects. And of course, they're different, so you get false. So you might be asking, why did it work fine for our int variables when our numbers were the same? Java correctly said that yes, those were equal. Well, in the case of a primitive, like an int or a float or a double or a short or a long or any of those other uh, Java primitive types, primitive variables are referring to their actual values and not the memory locations where an object is stored. So when you have something like int, uh, int one equals one, int int two equals two, now in Java, primitive variables represent that value itself and not a reference to it. But for everything that isn't a primitive, all variables of every other type are a reference to a memory location that has the object. So in short, when do you use double equals? It's when you are comparing two primitive types. Boolean, byte, short, int, long, char, float, and double. So if you are doing anything with those eight primitive types in Java, feel free to use the double equals and everything will work out great. So what about every other object type in the world? What do you do when you want to compare two objects that aren't primitive to see if they're equal? Well, you use the dot equals method on your objects. And you do that like this. It's offered in the string class. Um, so you call string one dot equals, and you pass in the other string that you want to check uh, whether it's equal to. And so now we can go ahead and run this code again and see what we see. We see the strings are equal and it's working great. So now the reason that works is because this equals method has been defined on the string class. And if we want to like really nerd out, we can like control click and eclipse into this equals uh, method in string and see what it's actually doing to see if these strings are equal. Uh, but you can see it gets real technical real quick. But basically, it's going to go through um, both of those strings and make sure every character matches with every other character in the string and return true if that's the case. And if not, it'll return false. Basically, for every other type of object you use in Java, it should offer a dot equals method so you can see if one object of that class equals another object of that class. 
And that will be the case for just about um, like every library you use, like, of course, strings, collections, everything offered in the main Java libraries will have implemented an equals method for you to use and you can depend on them. So what if you're creating your own classes, like I've got a dog class here, um, where I just have an age and a name on a dog and getters and setters for that. Right now I can go back into my program and create two dogs, right? So I can say dog, my dog equals new dog and dog, your dog equals new dog. And I can try and compare them using dot equals. And we'll change this to dogs. Now you might be thinking now, John, that should work, right? You said for everything else but primitives, you should use dot equals. So let's go ahead and run that. And what do you think we're going to get? Well, it says the dogs are not equal. So John, you said we, we've got two for primitives. We use the double equals and for everything else, we use the dot equals and everything will be all right. But what went wrong there? We have two brand new dogs. There couldn't be anything possibly different about them. So why aren't they equal? And the reason is because this dot equals method hasn't been implemented yet in my dog class. And so what happens is if we don't implement the dot equals method in our own classes when we create them, it uses the default implementation of the dot equals method from the object class in Java. The parent of all other classes in Java is the object class, and it defines a dot equals method. So if we don't define one, that's the one it uses. And guess what you think it does? Let's actually dive into it and see. That's right, it just returns the value of the double equals check on the object anyway. So the lesson here, if you don't actually implement the dot equals method in your class, it's just as bad as using the double equals. So how do you go about implementing the equals method in your classes? Um, all you need to do is go in and actually write that method in your class. So you just have to have a public boolean equals is the name of the method. Boolean is the return type. It returns true or false for whether it equals uh, the other object being passed in. And object is the type that needs to be passed in. And it's usually called obj. And you write your own implementation of what it means for one dog to be equal to another dog and you return true if they're equal and false if they're not. There's a little bit more complexity around that involved like if it's something other than a dog gets passed in or if it's null or weird things like that. And that'll be the subject of another video, writing a good equals method. But that's basically how you go about doing it. Now here's some super strange bit of Java knowledge that you can use to impress all the nerds out there. So let's go ahead and change this back to a double equals, right? String one and string two. And of course, as we know, Java says they're not equal because they're two separate objects and they have separate memory locations. But if we change these string declarations into instead of using a new string, we just use what's called a string literal and we set it like this, which is probably how you're used to setting strings and run it again, we get the strings are equal. What? Now that has to do with the strange way that Java actually holds these strings behind the scenes when you declare them like this. If you have two different variables that refer to the same string literal, Java will just hold that string literal in one place in memory and have both of those variables re refer to that one place if you don't use the new string command. So Java is doing what is called interning those strings. It's kind of a fancy thing it does behind the scenes in order to save memory. So if you have a whole bunch of string literal variables that refer to the same string, Java is going to only uh, condense those down into one memory location to save on memory when it can. But if you use new like we had before, uh, Java won't do that. So that's like weird, right? Like sometimes for strings, this double equals works and sometimes it doesn't. Lesson learned though, right? Just don't use it for anything except for your primitive data types that we went over before. Strings, dogs, any other type of object in the world that you want to see if two uh, of those objects are equal, always use that objects dot equals method. For primitives, use double equals and you'll be good to go. If you learned a little something in this video, let me know with a like. If you'd like to see more like this every week, be sure to hit the subscribe button. And thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.